I am presenting Union Gospel Press's Sunday School Lesson Number 7, Sunday, October 15th, 2023. The lesson is entitled, A Backsliding People. Lesson text comes from Judges chapter 2, verses 16 through 23. Related scriptures are Deuteronomy 9, 1 through 8. Judges 3, 1 through 7, Psalms 106, 34 through 48. The place is Canaan. The time is from about 1050 to 1380 BC. <clears throat> this week, we will consider another aspect of God's covenant with his people. We now look at how it applied to judges and kings. They played an important role in the history of the nation of Israel and were very influential in turning the people to or from God. Today's aim, facts, to examine how God raised up leaders to meet the need of his people at every crucial moment in their history. Principle, to show that God raises up the right people at the right times to do his work in this world. Application, to demonstrate that when we turn away from God, he often sends the right people before us to turn us back to him. Illustrating the lesson. When we are going the wrong way, God sends us godly leaders to turn us to the right. Practical points. One, we too easily forget what the Lord has saved us from and get caught up in the wrong things. Judges 2, 16-17. Two, God does not enjoy having to chasten his people and will deliver them as soon as possible. Verse 18. Three, without someone to hold us accountable, it is easy to lapse into sin. Verse 19. Four, we should not expect God's help in overcoming difficulties when we are living in disobedience to him. Verses 20 through 21. Five, trials and obstacles are often what we need to help us stay faithful. Verses 22 through 23. Golden text. The Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. Judges 2, 16. Today we have three lesson outlines. The first is God's plan, Judges 2, 16 through 17. The second is God's patience, Judges 2, 18 through 19. And the third is God's anger, Judges 2, 20 through 23. Introduction. During the three centuries following the death of Joshua, Israel's history followed a cycle repeated over and over again. The people fell into apostasy and came under the domination of a pagan nation until the people cried to God and he sent deliverers or judges to free them. Then they served the Lord for a time before again apostatizing, starting the cycle again. Among Israel's judges were an array of men and one woman. These included Enihu, Ehud, Sham, Shamgar, Deborah, Barak, Gideon, Abimelech, though many would not include him, Tola, Jair, Jephthah, Az, Izban, Elon, Abdon, and Samson. Samuel could also be considered one of the judges of Israel. These individuals were not so much judges charged with settling disputes as they were deliverers or saviors appointed by God to deal with oppression by Israel's enemies. Joshua died when he was 110 years old. After he and his generation passed off the scene, another generation rose up that was not in close communion with the Lord and what he had done for Israel. Our text for this lesson deals with the institution of the judges. It is a general description of how God used them to help Israel. God's plan, Judges 2.16. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them, verse 17. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a-whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. Deliverance, Judges six, Judges 2.16 
the Lord used pagan people to chastise the Israelites for their sins. It was his sovereign prerogative to do this as part of his stated intention of making them his special people. Exodus 19, 5 through 6. They forsook him on a regular basis, but he did not forsake them. If it appears that he did, it, this has to be seen in the light of his plan to discipline them and drive them back to himself for forgiveness and restoration. That is why God raised up judges from time to time to lead the Israelites in their oppression, in their uh, opposition to oppression, and grant them the deliverance they needed. Israel operated under a, theor a, a the theocratic monarchy. God served as king and he appointed the judges. They were in leadership positions for a limited time and they had no royal family line to succeed them as earthly kings did. Some were also limited to certain sections of Canaan rather than the whole land. Disappointment, Judges 2.17 the Lord and all who sought to serve him were bitterly disappointed at what happened during the time of the judges. Verse 17 indicates that the people's waywardness took place even while their prospective leaders were still alive. Verses 18, 18 through 19, as we shall see, show that the people became even more wayward after their judges died. The sinfulness of the Israelites were displayed in two primary ways. First, they chased after God's worship by pagans in the land of Canaan. They bowed down to them, thus violating the first two of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not, thou shalt have no other gods before me, and thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Exodus 23 through 5, Deuteronomy 5, 7 through 9. The second way the Israelites displayed their sinfulness was by turning quickly out of the way, followed by their fathers' ancestors. Those, those worthy predecessors had obeyed the commandments of the Lord. These new sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses deliberately took detours from the path marked out for them and wandered off into heathen territory controlled by Satan and his host of demons. Believers today can take a lesson from the ancient Israelites. Despite the advantages we might have today, the threat of backsliding and apostasy is always present. Allowing anything or anybody to displace our devotion to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit can develop into spiritual idolatry. Even the Apostle John, written in the latter part of the first century of the Christian era, closed his first epistle with this admonition. Little children, keep yourselves from idols, 521. Scripture indicates that idolatry is closely connected with demonic activity. Deuteronomy 20, 32, 16 through 17, Leviticus 17, 7, 1 Corinthians 10, 20. One of the disturbing developments in our world today is the growth of pagan religions, occult organizations, and new age teachings. These all have the potential to draw true believers away from the truth and into whole systems of error leading to apostasy and its consequences. God's patience. Verse 18. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Verse 19. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. Sympathy. Judges 2.18. The first part of this verse repeats what was stated in verse 16, but it adds that the Lord raised up the judges to deliver Israelites out of the hands of their enemies all the days of the judge. Keep that in mind while looking forward to verse 19, for that will tell us what happened after the judges died. 
it is the latter half of verse 18 that concerns us here. We are faced with the problem with the meaning of the word repented. If God is omniscient, all-knowing, why would he decide something and then later repent, repent of it? If he is unmutable, unmovable, unchanging, it is actually possible for him to change his mind and do something different. To assert that the groaning and vexation of the Israelites due to pagan oppression caused God to abandon the plan he had determined to follow would be to say that people can manipulate God. Since we know that cannot be done, we must seek another explanation for why God is said to have repented. The theological answer can be summed up in the following way. The Hebrew word in Judges 2.18 translated repenting can carry the idea of relenting or taking pity. This may include the thought of becoming softer or less severe and harsh. In other words, God's plan never changed. What changed was that he was now ready to rescue them because their suffering had finally caused them to earnestly ask for his help. Although God knows the end from the beginning regarding his dealings with us, we are required to walk by faith and not by sight. His ear is always open to our cry and his love is ready to be poured out upon us. We are responsible to obey God faithfully and should never blame him if our waywardness brings his chastisement upon us. Stubbornness, Judges 2.19 As mentioned before, verse 17 seems to indicate that the Israelites were wayward while their judges were alive. Verse 19 speaks of the people's waywardness after their judges died. Even after deliverance, the apostasy seems to have continued with or without judges being on hand. And this went on for about three centuries. This fits with Moses' scorching description of their rebelliousness. Deuteronomy 32, 15 through 21, 23, 28 through 33. Satan does not easily loosen his grip on people once he has them in his power. God's anger, verse 20. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice, verse 21, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. Verse 22, that through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Verse 23, therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. Decision, Judges 2, 20 through 21. Many today want to portray God only as loving and kind, regardless of how they treat him. They use frivolous terms such as the man upstairs or somebody up there to refer to him and cast him in the role of a glorified Santa Claus ready to shower them with blessings but no responsibilities. They certainly do not want to see him as the judge of the universe or as being angry enough to show his displeasure by punishing anyone. Verse 20 declares that the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. This is a blunt statement that cannot be reduced to something less severe. Since God does not change, we can be sure that he is just as angry with sinners today as he was then. That is a most sobering thought. God made a decision regarding the Israelites who had broken his covenant. He said that he would not drive out all the heathen left in the land of Canaan by Joshua when he, when he died. Let us back up and look at three scripture passages that show that the Israelites had been adequately warned about what God would do if they were unfaithful to him. Moses had said, If ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides and shall vex you in the land wherein you dwell. Numbers 33, 55. 
Joshua had said, Know for a certainty that the Lord your God would no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your side, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God have given you. Joshua 23.13 the angel of the Lord had said just prior to the beginning of the period of the judges, Ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. Judges 2, 2 through 3. Display. Judges 2, 22. This is an interesting verse to analyze. God said that he used the pagan people to, to the pagan people of Canaan to prove or test Israel. He allowed these heathen people to remain there alive and functioning in the midst of his chosen people in order to display or reveal Israel's spiritual character or lack of it. They served as a thermometer to show whether the Israelites were spiritually warm, tepid, or cold. If the Israelites sternly resisted pagan beliefs and practices and refrained from intermarrying with the heathen, and if they tried to turn these wicked people toward the Lord, these would be signs that all was well. If the Israelites held themselves aloof and tolerated pagan activities, this would indicate spiritual apathy. If they forsook the way of the Lord and moved over the line into pagan worship and practices, their apostasy would be evident. It was the latter that all too often happened. In our own time, we sometimes find that God tests the sincerity of our faith by placing us in spiritually hostile environments. That does not make God guilty of tempting us. Let no man say when he is tempted, tested, I am tempted of God to do evil. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust, passions, and enticed. James 1, 13-14 If we endure the testing with faith and patience, God uses these situations to develop our spiritual muscles and to make us mature. If we fail the test, God is grieved, we ourselves are weakened, and our testimony is diminished. As a result, unbelievers are not attracted to our Savior and Satan, and the forces of evil are pleased, distressed. Judges 2, 23. Canaan, the land of promise, became a spiritual battleground after Israel had subdued it and settled it. God took away many of the great blessings he could have bestowed upon it because the Israelites did not live up to their part of the agreement. Joshua had failed to drive out all the pagans as God had commanded. Joshua's successors also failed to do so. Therefore, the Lord withdrew his full support, which seriously distressed the Israelites for a long time. It was not until the ascension to power of King David and his son Solomon that full control was established over Canaan and the boundaries were extended through military prowess, political alliances, and wise administration. Looking on to Judges 3, we read these sad words. The, the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hittites, and Amorites, the Pezzerites, and the Hivites, and the Jesuits, and they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their daughters to their sons, and served their gods. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgot the Lord their God, and served Balaam and the, and the groves. Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushan Rishathim king of Mesopotamia, and the children of Israel served Cushan Rishathim eight years, verses 5 through 8. Fate unfaithfulness early on resulted in even more sin later on. It was at that time 
that the Lord raised up Adono, the first judge, to deliver Israel from foreign oppression. He was the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him and judged Israel and went out to war. And the Lord developed, the Lord delivered Cushan Rishathim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hands. And his hand prevailed against Cushan Rishathim, and the land had rested 40 years, verses 9 through 11. It has been said that those who forget the lesson of history are doomed to repeat its mistakes. The book of Judges makes that very clear with its record of the repeated cycle of apostasy, oppression, and deliverance. If we are wise, we will learn to stay true to God, doing our part and trusting him to do what he has promised. This is victorious living. Question 1. In what surprising way did God use the pagan nations in Canaan? 2. Why did the Lord occasionally raise up judges in Israel? 3. How did judges differ from kings? 4. What sins characterize Israel during the period of Judges? 5. Since God is unchanging, what does Judges 2.18 mean when it says that God repented? 6. How did the Israelites react to the various deliverances from their enemies? 7. What emotion did the waywardness of the Israelites create in the Lord? 8. What did Israel suffer as a result of not driving all of the pagan people out of Canaan? 9. How did God display the true state of Israel's character? 10. Under whose leadership did Israel eventually gain full control of its borders and expand them? This concludes the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, October 15, 2023. Thank you for listening. God bless.